Welcome to the team. I'm Ollie. I'm the team's head of R&D. I'm here to help you deliver the results the team expects. Do that, and I'm sure we'll get on great. Hey, your workstation's all set up and ready to go. Don't let us down. Hello folks and welcome to Paddock Pass, your pre-race edition for this, the inaugural round of the 2022 Formula One World Challenge. And I've got to say, it feels great to be back. As is tradition, there is something of an air of a first day back at school on arrival here. But it's more than that, because the new era of Formula One has arrived. And with it, the eagerly anticipated new car regulations, which have been designed to help promote better racing with clean sculpted lines, swooping rear and front wings, which should allow cars to follow each other more closely, new eye-catching 18-inch low-profile tires, the return of ground effect, and a reduction of aerodynamic physical adornments, the new cars look strikingly different, all while improving safety and pushing the limit of technical ingenuity. So then, which teams have interpreted the rules most effectively, and which drivers will adapt to their new car the quickest? leading the charge against the rest of the pack. Only time will tell. As always, we can't wait for this season to begin. But for now, from us, that's your First race of the season is always quite difficult for us trackside and for those back at the factory as well as it's the first time the car has run since winter testing. The more consistent mileage you can get in these sessions, the happier we'll be. All clear the garage please, cars ready to leave.
Modern F1 cars rely on more than just internal combustion to reach their maximum power output. The V6 turbocharged hybrid engines generate an extra 160 brake horsepower via the ERS, Energy Recovery System. The power for this electric motor is recovered from energy that otherwise would have been wasted. The MG UK recovers energy from braking and the MG UH from the turbo. The ERS system has a number of modes that can be changed on the fly for even more harvest or deployment, depending on if you need to charge the battery or gain more performance. Each lap, you can only harvest and deploy a limited amount of energy. This remaining value is visible on the MFD. This system will also degrade with use. As your energy store wears, the battery capacity will decrease. Additionally, as the MG UK wears, the rate you can harvest energy is slowed. Keeping up with the development race is vital for continued success in Formula 1, but resources are limited, so choose carefully where you allocate them. Throughout your career, you will earn resource points, and there are four departments of car development in which you can spend them – powertrain, chassis, aerodynamics and durability. At any one time, each of these can be tasked with researching a new part. Higher levels of upgrade will cost more and take longer to complete, but the performance gains will be significant. You can upgrade your facilities, which will allow you to develop more parts simultaneously, develop upgrades faster and have fewer failures. Your engine supply will also give you updates throughout the season in addition to your own. Department morale is also an important factor, so be careful what you say to the press. You'll need to find the right balance to suit your needs and maximize performance throughout the season. Over the course of the Formula 1 season, each driver is limited in the number of power unit and gearbox components that they may use. Exceeding these limitations will result in grid penalties. Your available power unit components can be managed on the vehicle management screen. The multifunction display is a vital tool to give drivers control over their cars and make important information visible during a race. It's possible to cycle through the screens on the MFD to access the settings such as brake bias or the tyres to be fitted at the next pit stop, as well as car condition, component temperatures and race strategy information. When speaking to your engineer through the radio, the MFD is also the place where you'll be able to view and select your available commands. Consistency over a long distance is vital in Formula 1, so being able to manage tyres and reduce tyre wear is a useful skill. The tyre management programme available in free practice sessions will help you learn tyre management while earning resource points for development of your car. Be careful on the controls to reduce the amount of tyre slip and therefore wear. The better you can do this, the higher you will score and the more resource points you will receive. You'll need to balance tyre management with speed as you must stay under the target lap time. When the on-screen bar moves towards the red end, that means that you're wearing your tyres more than expected at this part of the lap. When it moves towards the purple, you're wearing them less. Stay in the green or purple for a successful test. The safety car may be deployed if there is an incident or if the conditions are too dangerous to drive in. Once the safety car is out on track, there's no overtaking permitted and you must keep your lap time above a minimum in order to safely form a queue behind it. You can judge your pace using the delta element of the on-screen display. Ensure you drive slowly enough to keep it positive. Once the line has formed, the safety car will re-enter the pits. Remember that there's no overtaking until the green flag at the line. If the incident is less severe, the virtual safety car may be deployed. It's not necessary to form a queue under the VSC. Just stay above a certain delta time and obey the yellow flag rules until the virtual safety car period comes to an end. The formation lap is an opportunity to practice your race start and put some energy through your tyres and brakes to get them up to the optimal temperature for the beginning of the race. When the light goes green, pull away from the grid and stay in position, making sure to keep your car in good condition as you drive a lap at a steady but consistent pace in order to prepare for the start of the Grand Prix. As you return back to the grid having completed the formation lap, you must park your car within the correct grid slot. Once you are happy with your car's position, bring the car to a standstill in readiness for the race start.
races aren't won from the start line, but they can be lost, so getting a good start can make an important difference to your Grand Prix. As the lights come on, engage the clutch by holding the gear up button, then feed in the throttle to build up the revs. When the lights go out, release the clutch and it's away we go. But be careful not to release the clutch too early or you may end up jumping the start. If your RPM is too low when you drop the clutch, your car may go into anti-stall. Don't panic if this happens, keep a cool head, clutch in, build up the RPM and then release the clutch just like the start procedure to get underway again. There's a huge amount of time to be won and lost in the pits, but ensure that you don't get too greedy as you approach the pit lane speed limit line. On the approach, you'll see a notification of the pit lane speed limit and your distance to the limit line. If you cross this threshold too fast, you'll be giving a speeding penalty, so be careful. There are valuable tenths to be won by getting it right though, so leave your braking as late as you dare. Managing your turn-in point in towards the pit box is essential in helping you and your pit crew achieve the fastest pit stop time possible. Get the timing wrong, and this can cause you to add considerable time to your stop, meaning crucial seconds advantage could be given to your opponents out on track. At the pit exit, it's important not to cross onto the racetrack before reaching the end of the white pit exit line. The drag reduction system, or DRS, opens a flap on the rear wing to reduce drag and improve the straight line speed of the car. Drivers are able to use this system in specific DRS zones as long as the circuit is dry. There are no additional restrictions to DRS use in practice and qualifying, however, in a race, the system can only be used when the driver is one second or less behind another. Watch the bar at the bottom of your multifunction display as you approach the DRS zone to see your distance to the activation point and activate it by pressing the DRS button when the prompt appears. In the unforgiving world of Formula One, free practice sessions are a vital part of any Grand Prix weekend. During your F1 career, you'll be able to utilize these sessions to complete practice programs, which will help you learn the track and earn new points that can be invested in developing your car. You'll also be able to adjust your car setup over the course of these sessions to try and find those extra fractions of a second. The sporting regulations dictate that after each free practice session, you'll have to hand back two sets of your dry tire allocation for the weekend. So get the most out of them while you can. The track acclimatization program available in free practice sessions allows you to learn the track whilst earning resource points for the development of your car. On-track markers show the key points through each corner, and the more of these you're able to consistently drive through at an appropriate speed, the higher your score and the more resource points you'll be rewarded with. Try and chain together multiple successful corners for a consistency boost to your score. Tire selection is a critical issue in Formula 1, and the current tire regulations give individual drivers more freedom than ever. Pirelli allow 13 sets of dry tires and 7 sets of wets for a full race weekend, so you need to be careful to make your allocation last the distance. During the race, drivers must use at least two of the three available compounds. If wet tires are required for a session, these tire selection rules do not apply. In today's era of hybrid engine technology, Formula One employs a strict maximum limit on the fuel load. In order to run as light as possible, teams will tend to under-fuel their cars, but this means that drivers need to save fuel during the race. Fuel saving can be achieved by using a technique called lift and coast. This technique involves lifting off the throttle a few meters before the normal braking zone and allowing the drag from the air to begin the process of slowing the car. This reduces the amount of fuel used while keeping speed relatively high. The best place to employ lift and coast is at the end of a long straight into a heavy braking zone. The qualifying pace program available in free practice sessions challenges you to beat a target time that corresponds to an expected position on the starting grid. Complete a flat-out lap on the fastest tyre compound to set the best time you can and you'll earn some resource points for hitting your target. 
The race strategy program is all about developing a personal race strategy. This test will help the team to understand how much fuel is required and also the best tyre policy to employ for the race. The results are determined from data which is directly affected by your driving style, so managing your fuel and tyre wear during the test, for example, will result in a strategy that caters to these qualities. Sprints are a shorter race session around one-third distance of a standard Sunday race. Drivers are not required to pit during a sprint for a change of tyres, but they are not prohibited from doing so. The results of the sprint form the grid for Sunday's race, and there are points awarded for the top eight finishers of the sprint in the following denominations. First place awards eight points, second place awards seven points, third place awards six points, all the way down to eighth place with a single point.